study my name's d this is my wife millie so if you like what you see subscribe and hit the notification bell and if you wish to reach out to us you can email us at devoted to ya at gmail.com start isaiah chapter two Finally made it into the next chapter. My goodness, we've been on Isaiah Ooh. chapter one for what? Three months? Forever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Isaiah chapter two, verse one. This is what Isaiah, the son of Amaz, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Once again, it's giving us context who's being spoken to or who's being addressed. Uh, you can imagine that probably at this point, uh, so for those who are new, J Judah uh, sometimes is a nickname for the southern kingdom of Israel, which is uh, the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Benjamin, and some of the Levites that are left behind. So the other 10 tribes of the north have been taken into captivity into the northern, con northern uh, uh, nation of Assyria. It's called the Assyrian Captivity. And that was because they were disobedient and Yahuwah had divorced them. You can read that in Jeremiah chapter 3, okay? So part of Yahuwah's official divorce is allowing the Assyrian nation to come down and to take those uh, 10 tribes of the northern kingdom of Israel into captivity. So who's left behind? The two tribes, Judah and Benjamin. Their nickname is Judah. So sometimes when you see Judah or the Jews, it's really addressing Judah and Benjamin. Like Paul. Paul, he says, I was a Benjaminite. I'm a Benjaminite. But he's called a Jew. He's called the Judean. It's kind of one and the same thing. But anyway, this is who's being addressed. This is what's being who's being talked about. Judah and Jerusalem. Jerusalem being the heart of Israel. Verse 2: It shall happen in the latter days that the mountain of the house of Yahuwah shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills and all nations shall flow to it. Okay, you could say this has happened in the past in history. Yeah, we can say that. I always try to look for what things have not happened yet. When you hear the language in latter days, in the last days, I try to look for things what hasn't happened yet. Because there's people that swear up and down that, Oh, all this has been fulfilled already. Uh, but there's some stuff that hasn't been fulfilled yet. Verse 3, And many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of Yahuwah and to the house of the God of Jacob, of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. Okay, you could say that has, that's happened. For out of Zion the law shall go forth, and the word of Yahuwah from Jerusalem. Yeah. Oh, I got some. Okay, go ahead. Or that verse right there, it reminded me of a Messiah when he had the multitude and disciples and he preached upon the mountain, teaching the law, teaching the word. Mm -hmm. Amen. And he was in Jerusalem, wasn't he? Yeah, he traveled all over. Yeah, I know that, but he was in Jerusalem when he did too. <laughs> verse 4, he will judge between the nations and will decide concerning many peoples. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Hmm. That hasn't happened. I don't think that that has fully been accomplished. No. Nope. There's one thing that I could say hasn't been fully fulfilled yet. For a season it has. Right? As you read the scriptures... You will find that there was peace in Israel for 40 years. There was peace for whatever, 60 years, 20 years. But it's always gone back to war. And currently today, we're living at a time where there's a lot of war in the Middle East. Uh, and there's no temple. And it's escalating, too. Yep. With Iran. Verse 5. House of Yaakov. Come and let us walk in the light of Yahuwah. Didn't we read about that today? Walk in the light. Yep. 
as sister as you read that from first john children of the light so there's more context there's more affirmation to the laws not done away with because walking in the light according to isaiah means walking in the law the law of god the law of yahuwah so first john when it talks about walking in the light it's talking about the same light verse six for you have forsaken your people the house of jacob because they are filled from the east with those whom practice divination like the philistines and they clasp hands with the children of foreigners their land is full of silver and gold neither is there any end of their treasures their land also is full of horses neither is there any end of their chariots they're very prosperous they have a lot of goodies their land also is full of idols oh boy they worship the work of their own hands oh man that that which their own fingers have made so people bow down people are low therefore do not lift them up enter into the rock and hide in the dust from before the terror of yahuwah and from the glory of his majesty you know this is so important uh the idolatry issue is like one of the top sins in the old testament uh in the tanakh in the in the pentateuch idolatry is one of the top reasons why yahuwah was upset with israel it's spiritual adultery it's spiritual infidelity and so i remember uh I was speaking about my last encounter with the last church I was part of. And I remember telling the pastor, like, we have to raise the standard of holiness. We got to raise the standard of holiness. And I told him that there's a lot of paganism in Christianity. And you want to know what his response to me was? I'm not, I'm not called, God hasn't called me to expose the paganism that's in Christianity. God has called me to lead the house of prayer. And I remember telling my wife that because it was a secret meeting we had. No, I, the first time I was by myself. And then two years later, my wife wanted to go back just to get some closure. And I said, babe, I'm going to bring up that same question, that same point that I brought up. And I want you to hear for himself. I want him to respond. And I told him, do you remember telling me that you do not feel called to, uh, to 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 uh expose the paganism that's within christianity that's not your calling he said yeah and my wife was like wow i can't she couldn't believe it i was like i told you <laughs> before you before you go again can you read verse nine again verse nine says so people bow down talking about the idols they bound out to these idols that they make with their own hands people are low therefore do not lift them up so because they're bowing down to idols don't exalt them we read the Septuagint for you. Okay, that's, that's fine. Not, Go ahead. That's what I'm saying. It says, and the mean man bowed down, and the great man was humbled, and I will not pardon them. What do you make of that, brother? Talk to me. Don't well, let me interpret everything every time. Come on. And the, Well, the mean man bowed down, and the great man was humbled. Well, after you hear the story you just told me. <laughs> He sounded like he was a great man. He he was humbling, but he wasn't that humble, and he was he'll not be pardoned. Yeah, that's right. That's when you read that and you said that story, and I read the Septuagint version. That kind of reminded me, of, you know, you're that pastor. You may think he's humble, but he's not going to be pardoned for his, uh, you know, trying to be ignorant about the uh, paganism that's being mixed in with uh, Yahuwah's word. You don't want to speak about it. Yeah. Rebellion. Yeah. Intentional, willful disobedience. Yeah, Purpose, but trying to be humble. Purposeful. Yeah. Okay, okay. Interesting. Uh, where are we at here? Verse 10. <laughs> Verse 10. Enter into the rock and hide in the dust from before the terror of Yahuwah. And from the glory of his majesty, we hear about this in the, the newer writings, book of Revelation. People are hiding in the cliffs of the rocks in the, in the last days when Yahoo is going to part his wrath. People think they're going to be safe in the bunkers and all the rich people that got all their safe places to go. They're not going to be able to hide from Yahoo's wrath. 
But he, your Messiah is the rock too. So we should enter into him. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. I like that. I'll take that. <laughs> I'll take that. Well, I, got I like it. it. I like it. There's a, uh, let's see here. Seems like there is a cross reference here. Let's see what we got. Enter into the rock. We have uh, eight cross references. Uh, yeah, it goes back to Isaiah chapter 2, verse 19 to 21. So given some context, uh, men shall go into the caves of the rocks and into the holes of the earth from before the terror of Yahuwah and from the glory of his majesty when he arises to shake the earth mightily. In that day, people will cast away their idols of silver and their idols of gold to the rodents and to the bats which have been made for themselves to worship, to go into the caverns of the rocks and into the clefts of the rag, ragged rocks from before the terror of Yahuwah and from the glory of his majesty when he arises to shake the earth mightily. Messiah. So Messiah, Messiah. The good news is that people are getting rid of their idolatry, which is nice. And uh, what else we got here? Isaiah 10, so we go forward. It says, what will you do in the day of his visitation when Yahuwah visits and in the desolation, which will come from afar? To whom will you flee for help? Where will you leave your wealth? That to me sounds like you ain't going to be able to hide. 